Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs. Today with a teardown and repair and some complaints about these uh, Miniware DT71 mini tweezers, which I had lying around for nearly a year, but now found the time to play around with it uh, to make a comparison to this tool that I use regularly, the Mastec MS8911, which was featured uh, in another video, which I will link in down below. Uh, this one has the unique feature uh, that you have a low voltage measurement mode with only 100 millivolts AC measurement voltage and thus you can measure components in circuit because any PN junction is not turned on. And this is I think a must have for an RLC meter in this form factor. I, I still don't know uh, what measurement voltage this has. Because when I was playing around, I had several problems. Uh, first of all, the firmware update was very problematic. Then I found that the tips here are not sharp and they have to be manually filed to be really sharp. Because non-sharp uh, probe tips, uh, you cannot get through the oxide layer in the components. And you sometimes measure nothing although the component is okay, uh, simply because you don't poke through the oxide layer, which is uh, on nearly every component, even when it's fresh out of the factory. But the most serious problem was that uh, from one second to another, it didn't work anymore and it didn't charge correctly. You have a little, let's see where it is. Here is a little LED that is uh, usually red during charging and when, when the charge is full then the LED goes off and it didn't turn off, it remained uh, red for all the time and whatever I did I couldn't uh, get this thing to turn on again and then I went to uh, the EV block forum and there a user and uh, not only one, I think several users uh, had the problem, had the same problem the reason is there are two little lithium rechargeable batteries in the uh, probe arms and one of them uh, is simply dead and not only dead it, it, it did develop a short. I tr tried to unsolder it and charge it manually and you can see here zero voltage. So uh, you can't charge um, the other one because they are apparently in parallel and the short in this one Perhaps you can even see that it has grown a little bit thick and that's a serious, uh, that's a sign for a serious problem in any lithium uh, rechargeable battery. Um, uh, but the user in the EV block forum told that uh, simply unsolder the dead cell and this thing works also with, uh, with one cell. Uh, in function and uh, so this did charge up again you can see the uh, the charging light is off it's at the moment at the USB port from my uh, PC and so we'll make a quick test if it turns on again and you can see on the OLED uh, though although not very clearly it's running again so uh, this was one serious problem and I tried to find a replacement. The designation is LP for lithium polymer and then uh, 300829 and these are in millimeters. It's the form factor. It's 30 millimeters long, uh, 8 millimeters uh, in what, what do you call this large <laughs> extension and the, the, the height or the thickness is 2.9 millimeters. And it's very difficult to find a replacement uh, with, uh, which is either smaller, it has 50 milliamp hours, which is e either smaller or exactly the same size, otherwise it won't fit here into the uh, space uh, of the measurement arm. But nevertheless, I think I leave it with uh, one rechargeable battery simply because this might be a design fault. You should never put uh, batteries in parallel. The problem will probably turn up again after days, month or whatever time uh, when you really try to replace this 
faulty rechargeable battery. So um, let's try to put this together again and uh, talk about the other problems then. Uh, by the way, we can also measure if uh, the good b battery has charged up, charged up to the correct voltage and we get 4.14 volts, so that's the typical uh, voltage for a fully charged lithium polymer battery. It should be around 4.2 or 4.3 volts maximum, so charging works again, this battery looks fine, and now let's uh, put this all together again and hope that it works also after reassembling it. So, first you have to find out which one is the positive and which one is the negative terminal. Um, and there is a little designation TP on this side for probably for test point positive and the other side is TM test point negative. So this one is the positive side and you take the, the little arm with the red ring around the screw and try to fit it over this again and then you can already screw in the probe tip finish with this little thingy here and so the first arm is repaired and find what's a bit strange is they are only uses use this uh, flat flex uh, cable uh, both for uh, the battery and for the um, the wire for the test point and there are three little holes here where two of them um, in the end the screws go through so you have to be quite careful um, not to poke through through the flat flex otherwise the thing is broken so this one seems to be in place again also So, and finally two screws on each side for fixing the two parts. Let's start only with the one and make a little check if it's still working. Yeah, it seems to work. Okay, so we can fix the other screws. So, and for taking it apart, just the reverse order, first unscrew these two screws, then the screw that holds 
the tip um, pull out this little thingy here and then you can um, pull the plastic holder upwards and have have it uh, disassembled all right works again so that was it for the battery and uh, now let's come and I already described the problem with the probe tips uh, you have to file them down to make them uh, really sharp uh, you get a spare pair of probe tips delivered so there's uh, no problem of course you have to file down the the gold plating um, but that's that's no problem at all and now let's come to the problem with the firmware update so just by chance uh, I found a new firmware update available really today at the day when I'm shooting this video and um, when you switch the device on either by holding the two probe tips together or by uh, touching on the hidden button You saw first of all the firmware version which is 1.13 now at the moment here and we'll now try to update the firmware which I had a lot of problems the first time. So first you uh, pull the two parts um, out so and then you need this uh, adapter cable which you get delivered with the DT71 which you should never lose because I don't think that you ever get uh, such a thing on eBay um, it has two of these four pin phono plugs 3.5 millimeter one, the, one, the male one is for charging and the female one is here for the main device for updating firmware and updating the calibration and the settings file and you have to push this really hard inside because if the last of the contacts doesn't uh, get inside like here it will power on as you see with the message uh, DFU V3.53 and the voltage on the USB bus but you don't get the Windows sound uh, for a new device in this case it should be a removable hard disk and that is simply because um, the plug isn't inserted firmly until its final position so you think that it's that everything is okay uh, but you don't see the USB hard uh, disk and so you have to push in until the, the last contact also makes contact and then connect it and perhaps you can hear it in the background that now uh, we get a new USB removable hard disk and now let's switch over to the PC screen to uh, see how the firmware update is done so once you have connected the DT71 take a look at your computer and you will find a new removable disk and when you open it when you double click it you should only find the cal.ini file which will give us some problems later and next is you have to download the firmware that you want to uh, use here from the mini dso.com homepage under the entry material download for DT71 mini digital tweezers and just by chance I have momentarily uh, installed version 1.13 and the newest is 1.15 so you download the zip file which I have done before and this is the, the zip file when you double click it there are two files inside a readme with the version history and the hex file and you extract the, the hex file to your desktop or wherever and now comes the 
important thing. You have to change the name to simply to dt71.hex. So remove all other letters. We had the letter G for the, for the hard disk of the DT71 mini tweezers. It has an eight character designation and is at the moment uh, with the letter G in our PC. And now we simply send the hex file or copy and paste it to the USB drive G and now it, perhaps you could hear it in the background. Um, the DT71 is restarting itself and we have to open it again. And this happens quite often. Now you find the, the file changed to the extension uh, .er for error. Uh, so just try again sending this to letter G. It again will shut down and restart. And let's see if it has... And now it has changed for the second attempt the, the file extension to RDY which stands for ready and now in fact the new firmware file has been recognized and the next time you connect the DT71 with the tweezer part um, it, it will uh, start up and show you the correct version now version 1.15 uh, which I've just checked if you uh, did recognize the the Windows sound for removing any USB devices. So now let's try the next thing that gave me problems and still does and that is changing the calibration file. If we double click it there are a lot of user settings which are in fact very useful. For example for the frequency output, the sine frequency stands uh, is at option 0, which means 10 kilohertz. Well, for checking audio circuitry, it would be better to change this to 1 kilohertz. And therefore, we change this to option 3. Just close the file, save it. And now again, every time you make a change, the DT71 will restart itself. So now let's check. And what do we see? It has replaced the modified any file to the, to, to the default file. So every time you make a change, all the changes are discarded and it simply copies the default uh, file back 